Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I remember being a student. How many remember these desks? Did you guys, anyone here in this room have desks like this when you were a kid? Anybody? You remember? Mine was like this. I know I, know I look 22, but it was like this. And I remember being in class and having my own desk, and, you know, I did a lot of bad things with it. You know, it had a lot of my signatures on it. And, uh, and I was just a bad student. I was a horrible student. Any horrible students out there? Ex-horrible students, of course. Yeah, just, just bad. You just didn't like it. You know, you just, you know what, for me, and I know there was a grade scale of A, B, C, D, and F. And, uh, but my terminology of each letter was different because I was, like I said, I was so dysfunctional. A for me was like, A is for annoying, you know, B is for, um, you know, baloney, uh, C is for you're a coward if you got C's, uh, D was, okay, you're doing better, you know, F was fantastic. And I actually did, you know, because my mom uh, didn't speak that good of English when, um, when we were young, you know, she came here to this country at 21 years old. And, and I remember trying to convince my mom that F was fantastic. And uh, I did, honest to God, if she's here today at the service, you could t- ask her. And, uh, and she bought it for a little bit until she found out what it really meant. And, uh, and then she gave me a spanking of my life. But, but I was not a good student, man. I was horrible. I was so bad. Do you guys remember the standardized test that they would do every single year? I hated that thing. You know why? Because they would cram all the kids from the school in the cafeteria. And if you remember, they had the, uh, the whole uh, letter, you know, the scan sheet. And you, had a, you get a booklet, and, and, and you have to bubble in your, your, your options, etc. cetera. And, 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 I, and I, I hated this test because it basically, it, it, Dis, it helped the school discover uh, my, my academic growth. Uh, the standardized test was for the state to, to get an overall picture of the academic growth of the school by its students. And, uh, and I mean, I was so bad, honest to God, every test I took in, in school, and if you're, if you're any student here, okay, this is bad. I don't, this is, don't, don't follow my path. I mean... I turned out good, praise God, but I went through hell before I turned out good. Um, but I would literally do bubble gum, bubble gum in the dish. How many pieces do you wish? I pick this one. And that's how I would choose my answers. And, and, uh, and I honestly, I did just, uh, do you guys remember the word problems? You know, if Billy has seven pieces of gum and he eats, I'm like, I don't give a rip if Billy has seven pieces of gum. You know, give me a piece, right? <laughs> And, and, and especially when, when I remember the mathematics, I just put any number and it just be like, okay, like, well, why did you get that? Well, it just, that's why I was feeling. I was feeling that number, you know. <laughs> I was feeling seven, you know. I was feeling eight, you know. And, and so I was just a bad student. And, uh, and now, of course, I, I, I've obviously, once I came to Christ at 21 years old, I realized I wasted life. I wasted an opportunity to be better. Um, and, uh, and uh, I, I have been self-taught. I, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I, I, I read a lot. I, I love reading. I love studying. And, and obviously, we believe in education now. We have a school in Oaxaca, Mexico, and, and we're, we're, we're bringing education to a state in, in a country that is 50 years behind in their education. And, and I believe in it so much, and I'm believing for one day for us to also be able to do something here in America where we can have a school for your kids that can come and get an education that will not only uh, give them the academic strength they need to do something awesome here in, in America, but also to give them the, uh, the spiritual strength to, uh, to be great leaders as well as, uh, as kids of God. But, uh, but I want you to know this. Uh, the, the monitor would always say in that cafeteria, ready, and we'd like, okay, pick up your pencils, and we, everybody had to pick up their number two pencil, right? It couldn't be number three or one. It had to be a two, and, uh, and they said, go, and then boom, the clock would go off, and, and then everybody would go. Well, guess what? God also has students, and they're called disciples. You see, disciple The meaning of disciple, if you read the scriptures, it says we are disciples of God, we are disciples of Jesus, and we're to follow him, right? And so a disciple is a student or a learner. That's the definition of a disciple. But God says, ready, 
set, grow. And he does that from the very moment that you receive Jesus Christ. He has an expectation that in his school, you are also going to develop the spiritual academics that he needs you to have in order to walk out this life because doesn't matter, listen, regardless what you do for a living, you can be an attorney, and let me tell you something, and you can be an awesome attorney if you have the spiritual foundation and, and the backing of God's word. It, you can be anything you want on this earth, but you must have a spiritual foundation, and I tell you, when you have a spiritual foundation, man, you can be successful. You can be blessed, and I know that because coming from someone who, you know, it messed up my whole school, everything from elementary all the way through high school, and then I didn't go to college, um, and, uh, and, and once I came to Christ, man, I'm telling you, I dug deep in this word, and the word of God literally renewed my mind and, and just changed the way I thought, and I kept getting promoted uh, in the workplace and moved up to district manager, and I'm talking, we're talking positions where, where you needed degrees in, but how many know that when, when you get the revelation of God's word, let me tell you something, he gives you a degree and he gives you wisdom beyond your years, he gives you intelligence that people are just wow like wait a minute you didn't go to college I have sat with the most phenomenal business people who are rich who come to me and ask me for wisdom now I may not have their their financial status but let me tell you what I do have I have the spiritual wisdom in order to give them when they need it amen, amen. and that's what God wants to do with all of us say it I'm a student say it with me ready, ready. set, set. Grow. grow because God wants you to grow in 2018 God wants you to grow in 2018, but I want you to listen carefully today because if you don't listen carefully, you're going to just treat this message as another message, and this is not a message. This is a challenge for us to grow, spiritually speaking. You got to grow up spiritually, and I truly believe that when you grow up spiritually, you'll also grow up in the tangibly, in the physical realm as well. There's, there is something to say about your spiritual walk has has a connection with your physical walk and what you do for life. It really does. And I know that by, by, by experience because God has renewed my mind. God has changed the way I do life, the way I think. I, I'll be honest with you. I have never taken algebra. I've never taken geometry. But for some reason now, with no one ever teaches, I know how to do geometry. I know how to do algebra. I'm very good with numbers. I'm, I'm good when it comes to word problems. How do you explain that? I'll tell you how. It's called the word of God. But you didn't go to school. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you. I just know. I just know. There's something supernatural about God's students when they become a student under the master, the teacher, that he begins to literally just change your whole life and make it something brand new that even you will be in awe of what you can do. But when God does something, man, he does something that's just supernatural beyond any human um, idea or mindset. It's incredible what God does. And so I want you to know that God always wants to challenge us to grow. Now, growing up, why, did it, why was I such a bad student? Here's why. I had no one to inspire me. I had no one to motivate me. I had no one to hold me accountable. And, uh, and listen, I, I have a great mom. My mom was a single mom doing her best to try to feed the mouths that she had and, uh, and just didn't have the, the means to, to even understand, you know, the, the process of school, etc. cetera. And, uh, and today, as a believer, guess what? You and I, we have no excuse because we have a God who motivates you. We have a God who inspires you. We have a God who encourages you. We have a God who corrects you. We have a God who spanks you with love. We have a God who instructs you. We have a God who loves you, who embraces you. So we don't have an excuse for not growing in the things of God, there's no excuse for it whatsoever. God is saying, I'm your inspiration, I'm your motivation, and I give you a tutor named the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, and I will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So guess what? When you become God's student, the Holy Spirit will be your greatest teacher, and then he'll remind you of the things that you read. That's why when people say, you know what? I always read and I never get nothing out of it. Guess what? Eventually, it'll come. 
It'll just happen. Man, the things you couldn't understand, the things you couldn't fathom, all of a sudden, you get in a situation and boom, you know exactly how to handle that situation. So you never stop reading because I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will reveal the things that you need to see, the things that you need to know. So God will challenge us to grow. How does he challenge us to grow? Well, guess what? God wants you to increase in the knowledge of him. God wants you to increase in the knowledge of his word. God wants you to increase in the pursuit of excellence in all things that you do in this life. And the only way that you can do that is by being a student of God. There's no other way. You have to accept the fact that in 2018, I am going to be an intentional student of God. I'm no longer just going to come to church and just be a hearer of messages. I'm going to go to church and be a doer of the word that God is speaking to me. I'm going to change the way I hear. I'm going to change the way I see. I'm going to change the way I receive. And I'm going to change. And I'm going to start doing some things. And I'm going to start seeing some, some great fruit in my life because I believe that many of us here, including myself, this year, 2017, there are some things that we did that we failed on. And we've all have failed. Every single one of us, we have failed in some way. We have failed in our relationships. We have failed our children. We have failed in, in getting out of debt. As a matter of fact, we, we get an A on getting in debt. And we have failed in so many things. But God says, hey, listen, I want you to take those failures, and I want them to be your greatest teachers, and we're going to learn how and what not to do in 2018. Are y'all ready for today? Yes. Are you guys here? Yes. Say it with me, grow. grow. Why am I talking about this today? Because you probably thought I was going to be like, okay, these are the five principles of your goal setting. No, no, no. It doesn't do you no good to set goals if you haven't even grown up. We're going to grow up. Why? Because I want you to look at point number one. Your spiritual walk will reflect your physical condition. Your spiritual walk will reflect your physical condition. And this is true. How you are right now spiritually is how you are physically. If you are spiritually sick, if you are spiritually unhealthy, you are physically unhealthy. I'm telling you. There's something to say about your spiritual walk. You know what? I, I have uh, different mentors that I like to follow or listen to. And, uh, and this, this one lady, she's, uh, she's like crippled. And uh, she's had a really rough life. And, and this morning, you know what? I was, I, I was reading. I like to be inspired. And I was reading her story. And she has uh, an Instagram called Hope Heals. And uh, she, she has uh, all kinds of, of dysfunctions in, in her health condition uh, because of a stroke that she had. But, but look at this. I want to read something. Look what she wrote this morning. The idea that our pain can be used for good is not only a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, because you know what? Nobody likes to say, hey, listen, your pain will be your greatest teacher. Nobody wants to hear that. Who wants to hear that my pain, my suffering, is going to be my greatest teacher in this life. Nobody wants to hear that. It's a hard pill to swallow. But look what she says. She says, but can sometimes feel downright sadistic. But so many big and small stories in my life continue to prove it to be true. Five years ago, I broke my right leg so badly, I had to get a permanent metal rod installed in it. After years of learning. After years of what? Relearning. After years of what? And I believe that today you have to make an intentional decision to unlearn some habits that you created in 27 and you need to relearn some new ones. And that's how we're going to, I'm going to talk about how we're going to do that today. But, but look at this. So she had to relearn to walk post-stroke. It was a huge what? Setback. And I believe that there are people here that have been on setbacks in 2017, you know you should be further, but you've been so set back that nothing has grown. Your finances haven't grown. Your marriage hasn't grown. Your kids haven't grown. Your personal walk with God hasn't grown. And you're just stuck, man. You're just, you're not growing. You're not growing. You're not growing. God's saying, no, we're going to grow. We're going to grow. As a matter of fact, the word of God, and I'm going to teach you on that tonight. God gave me a word for Elevate Church, and he said, you know what? Tell the people that, that 2018 is the year of action. And let me tell you something. Action is a verb. Faith is an action. 
It's time to faith up and faith forward in 2018. And so he says, check this out. So um, uh, not, not to mention, it was literally one of the most painful things I've experienced, but it did garner me a pretty great new nickname for my friends, and now they call it the Steel Magnolia. So just a few nights before this past Christmas, surprise, surprise, I missed a step and I took another bad fall, even with Jay walking, her husband, right beside me. He caught me from falling down, but I still hit my right leg the one with the metal rod in it, on the sharp step edge, so hard, it honestly could have broken it again. As I write this over a week later, my legs still what? But do you see the beauty here? We can be battered and bruised, but not fully broken. And sometimes the pain of our past, the scars and steel, can be just the thing that prevents us from breaking again. There are some things that maybe have prevented you in 2017 to take you to the place that you wanted to be in or the things you wanted to do. But that's okay. Don't allow your past to dictate your 2018. Let your past mistakes, let your past failures be the things that you will examine and that you will look at And that you'll be honest with yourself with and really begin to address those things so that those failures, those setbacks that maybe you created and stop pointing the finger at at someone else and just take responsibility and say, you know, God, I've been blaming that situation, that experience, that person. I've been blaming and just accept. See, part of growing is taking responsibility. When you learn to take responsibility, even if it wasn't your fault, you're going to grow. Let me take you to a verse in the Bible right here real quick. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 13.5. Listen, because uh, I just gave you a whole bunch of information, but it's scriptural. The Bible says this, examine. Everybody say examine. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. And let me tell you something. And maybe in 2017, you get hit with all kinds of stuff, and you can honestly say, you know, Pastor, man, I'm not the same faith person I used to be. It says, test what? (laughs) I'm sorry. Test what? You know what? You really want to test yourself? (laughs) Go do something that annoys you. And it will show you whether or not you've grown. Right? Don't pray for patience because when you pray for God's patience, he will give you all the frustration. Why? You just ask for a test. Right? Don't, don't pray, you know what, God, give me more money. Because listen, more money, more problems. Yeah. Yeah, some of you, you don't know what to do with money, so you get in debt again. And you fail the what? test you fail the test and so look he says here's he says test yourselves do you not realize that christ jesus is in you and he goes on to say unless of course you fail the test you know what i i I, sometimes i wonder if anyone's really listening to me here because i'll preach a message and and i'm giving you tools and application and things that you can apply and help you grow and and then you talk to people and it's like wow were you in the same room with me like i just talked about that right now and i just gave you you know some 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 tools to do it and, and and you know what here's the reality here's the truth i think that that when we get to the place where where we're constantly seeing our life fail 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 and and i'll get to failure right now i i i really believe that most if not often the issue is that we stop realizing that the greater one who lives in us is greater than whatever you're facing in this world. And his name is Jesus. And so here he's saying, hey, listen, examine yourself whether or not you're in the faith. Do not, don't you realize that Christ Jesus is in you? In other words, man, there is no way that we should keep having failure after failure after failure after failure after failure willingly, 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 and we're, and we're being intentional, intentional, intentional. You know, when you're willfully sinning, when you're willfully sinning, your intention is, of course, to not pass the test. 
when you're willfully not forgiving? See, some people say, I just can't forgive. No, it's not that you can't. It's that you won't forgive. Why? Because you're willfully not willing to forgive or let go of that situation. So guess what? You fail the test. And why do I fail the test? Because of course, you forgot who lives in you. And his name is Jesus. Are you hearing me? I know y'all probably came to hear a nice little story on goal setting. No. No, we got to grow. We, we got to grow. Because I, I honestly believe that, that, that there have been many of us that have maybe failed this year in, in our faith walk. You know, you, you let things distract you. And listen, it could have been a bad relationship that you got linked up with and, and you got so distracted that, man, you went from, from being faithful and committed and loyal to your God to all of a sudden you've been so distracted that you lost that relationship, that, relationship, that connection, that intimacy with God. When God's saying, hey, listen, I need you to grow in relationship with me, but you let something come in and distract you from it. You know, or maybe you can say, you know, this year, man, I can look at my life and, and, and I'm, as I'm examining myself, Pastor, I realize that, man, my hunger meter has been on empty, man, for the last eight months. And I haven't done anything about it. You know, I've noticed that, that I don't have a hunger for his presence. Like, all I do is, is I'm hungry to complain about what hasn't happened. And, and I've been thirsty to talk about all my issues and my mountains instead of being hungry for the one who lives in you that can handle that situation. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. You can't just sing it and not live it. See, I want to take us in 2018 from the place of just reading the letter. Come on. We need to go from reading the letter to it. Sorry about that. Can you pick that up for me, please? To, to it being your life. In other words, it's no longer what scripture did you memorize? It's what scripture do you live? Like, which one do you live? Because I can care less how many you've memorized. I want to know which one is your message? Which one is your lifestyle? Are you hearing me today? And so God's saying, hey, Mauricio, 2018, there have been some, maybe some things. I mean, you have to ask yourself, you know, maybe your, your excellence, maybe that has filled this year. You got sloppy. Come on, you started very, very just together, and you want to keep things organized. Come on, you know how it is. Let's move the house around. Let's move the furniture. And it's funny how, how we, we try to change the, the outer, right, the physical things, not realizing that you got to start with the internal things before you can fix the external stuff. And we, we, have, we have twisted ourselves so bad that we want to change all the outer limits instead of dealing with what's happening inside. You see, you can, you can change your room, but you ain't changing you. Come on. You can redecorate and still be the same old you. You can do all those things, but you ain't growing. And this, this, this is the year where we have to say, enough. I have to go ahead and examine myself whether or not I'm in the faith. Examine. And he says, test yourself. Test yourself. You know, some of us, maybe, man, we, we have to examine and say, you know what? Every time pastor talks about tithing, man, I get weird about it. Well, guess what? The only reason you're weird is because you keep failing that test. God wants you to pass the text. Now, let me talk about failure. Okay, everybody say failure, failure is underrated. Okay, because I know that sometimes people can walk away and think like, dang, you know what, I'm a failure. Pastor just reminded me what a failure I am. No, no, chill out. <laughs> failure is underrated. And, and what do I mean by that? When I say failure is underrated, I want you to understand that even if you have failed in any area of your life, morally or financially or whatever, you can always retake the test. I remember, you know what, when I used to take the test and I was doing my bubblegum, bubblegum, you know what, I would get bored at a certain point because it was a big test, long test, hours. You know, I would go on a bathroom break, like, oh, can I go to the bathroom? And, and of course, when I went to the bathroom, I didn't have to go. I would just go walk around the school and be like, dang, this is cool, nobody's around. And, and I'd just go like on a whole walk. I would just be distracted with trees and, and you know, just crazy. I'm talking little kid walking around the whole school, Right. That's what church people are like. They come, they, they, they're, they're, they're taking the test with God, and then they get distracted, and here's what's happened. I believe that there have been so many people, so many good Christians that have walked away in the middle of their test because it's gotten so hard that you forgot to come back and finish it. 
And God's saying it's time to not only take, retake the test, but it's time to finish the test. I don't know what you're, where you're tested in life. See, God will test you. Satan will tempt you. And you got to understand that. God will test you. Why does he test me, pastor? Why does God have to? Because God wants to test to make sure that you are faithful to what you're asking him for. He can't give you more finances. He can't bless you with, with more blessings if you can't take care of the things that you already have. And so God's saying, this is the year of action. Those things that you have been just putting aside, man, that, that table where you were supposed to take your test that you've walked away from, you got to go back and you got to retake that test all over again. And it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be amazing because, listen, when you take God's test, God rewards faithfully. He rewards big time. <laughs> Say, failure, failure. is underrated. underrated. When you avoid failure, you avoid success. It's so true. Why? Because failure is the doorkeeper to your success. You got to realize that. It's the doorkeeper to my success. Failure basically puts you in a place where, well, let's bring it back to education. Failure is like a foreign language. It really is. I remember being in school taking Spanish. I sucked. Here you, but my, listen, I failed, but my Asian friend got an A. I'm like, this is horrible. How does the, how does the Mexican guy fail Spanish 101? And my little Asian guy, you know, because I remember when I, when I said Spanish, I'm like, I was all cocky. I'm like, yeah, psh, it's going to be an A, man. I got this. I'm Mexican, you know. I'm like, it's going to be amazing. I failed miserably, but my little Asian friend, man, he's like, hey, talking to you all in Spanish and just being all Mr. All That and a bag of tortillas. I mean, it was just amazing how I'm just like, wow. But you know what it did to me? It, it really just, it, it, it put me on a place of shame. And, and it got so bad that, that I didn't want to speak Spanish at all. It, it got so bad that even as I was in ministry and, and people would ask me, can you do this in Spanish? And when I'm like, nope, only English, sorry, get a translator, you know? <laughs> It, it was bad, like, hey, can you preach? No, uh, I need an interpreter if you want me to preach. And, and you know what? I kept doing this till I finally got to a place like, wow, wait a minute. You know what? The very thing that God needed me to pass was for the very purpose of what I'm doing now. You see, because now I preach in Latin America the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we have a school where we bring education to children who are at risk of being the modern day slaves. Now I sit before people in government in Latin America where I'm able to cast the vision of what God wants to do in their nation. You see, the very thing that you've been afraid to go back and retake as a test is the very thing that's linked to the blessing and the breakthrough and the call that God's trying to get you into. If you're always tested in the area of offense, that's probably because God has given you the ministry of reconciliation and until you learn to reconcile with people, you will always deal with offense. Oh, that was an amen right there or that's an omi, I don't know. Ready, set, Failure is a foreign language, and you have to learn the language of failure because failure is the doorkeeper to my success. It's your greatest teacher. You didn't fail. I just learned how not to do it. <laughs> but if you willfully keep failing, shame on you. Now that's shame on you. Oh, pastor, dang, you know what? Why do I got to get tested like that? Why does God have to test me? Listen, God tested his own son. You see, while Adam sold you out, <laughs> Jesus saved you. Adam sold us. We need to talk to Adam when we get to heaven. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder how many salads are in the church. Adam failed. Jesus saved. It's just the way it works. God tested his own son. Look at me, Luke, quickly, because some of you are getting mad. Hurry up. <laughs> Luke. Luke, Luke 4. Quick, 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 quick. We're almost done, almost done. 
Turn off your phone. Everybody say this to me. Say, God will allow me to be tested. He allows it. Okay? Just know that. Just know that. But Satan will allow you to be tempted too. So look at this. Luke 4, verses 1 through 14. It says, Jesus full of the what? Holy Spirit. So listen, you can be full of the Holy Spirit and still be tempted and still be tested. All right? Full of the Holy Spirit, he left the Jordan and was led by who? To where? So listen, not all your wilderness experience is the devil. Sometimes God has to take you to the wilderness to prune you and to remove some stuff inside of you that doesn't belong there because you're trying to get to the blessing. But let me tell you something, it, it requires a sacrifice. And that sacrifice sometimes is you and me. See, and I'm learning this. I, the Lord rebuked me. And I'm going to be honest with you. He said, Mauricio, in 2018, you already have encouraged the church very well in 2017. And I do. I think, I think we encourage here very much. I try to keep a good balance on encouragement and correction. But he said, he said this. He said, while too many churches in America are trying to preach resurrection life to people in their sermons, meaning he's saying there's too much self-help going on. Everything's always about you and you and you and you. And he said, last time I, I looked at the scriptures that I wrote, he said, we are to die to ourself. While we're trying to resurrect our life, God's saying, no, I want you to die to you. 2018 is the year of dying to you. Enough. Enough. Look at the person and say, enough. It's not about you no more. And if you're offended, that's your test, you know. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That wilderness experience is like what people, you know, when they say, I hate it when pastors say, wilderness is not from God. I, come on, man, what's wrong with you? Man, wilderness is my, is my, it's my school. Come on, it's my university. It's, it's where I grow. It's, it's, where, it's where reality hits, man. It's where, like, you face the facts and you're like, dang, I'm really messed up. Bless you. It's a cute laugh, huh? Chew. Just don't do it again, okay? That was cute, but don't. <laughs> Where for 40 days he was what? Tempted. By who? The devil. So listen, God doesn't tempt, okay? He tests, but he doesn't tempt. He says, and the devil tempted him, and he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you're the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil led him up to the high place. Everybody say the high place. Everybody say the pride place. <laughs> A lot of pride too in the church. He led him to the pride place. And he showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest plane. So he took him from high to higher of the point of the temple. He says, you're the son of God. He said, throw yourself down from here. And then look, and then Satan, listen, when Satan knows more word than you, that's scary. Satan starts quoting the scripture. He says, throw yourself off because here's what God says. Even Satan is quoting it saying, because it is written. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished, everybody say, when the devil had finished. You remember the standardized test? Okay, at the count of three, we are finished. Put your pencils down. One, two, three. Jesus right here was in the test. And when the devil finished, look at this. All this tempting, he left him until what? In other words, the test and the tempt is always going to happen every single year. The question is, which ones have you failed? Examine yourself. 
But look, after you pass the test, here's what happens to you and me. After we pass the tent, here's what happens to you and me. What happens is verse 14, and then Jesus returned after the test to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. Let me tell you something. When you pass the test, there are rewards that come with it. When you pass the test of pain, let me tell you something, there is going to be a shout that's going to come out of you and the whole world will see it. Come on, your family, maybe they've been looking down at you, maybe friends, maybe people were were saying, man, you're no good, you're nothing, but because you have endured, because you have passed, because you have pressed, because you have faith and you trust, let me tell you something, at the end, even they will know, dang, Nothing could have taken them out, not even my words that were trying to bring them down. You will pass the test. And when you pass the test, you'll get his best. That's what God's promise is. Say grow. I mean, think about it. How many parents do I have here? Lift your hand if you're a parent. Okay, parents, listen to me. You relate with me, okay? I got two kids. Wouldn't it look funny if, if there was a 25, 30, 40, 50, 60-year-old man in your child's junior high class? I'd be like, bro, grow up. What's wrong with you? And he's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't, I I just, I wasn't a good student. I'm just, I want my junior high diploma. No, dude, it's too late. No, what's wrong? Get out. Are you crazy? I mean, first of all, I wouldn't want some old dude with my daughter. But check this out. How is it that you would think that your heavenly father will look down on you, his son, and allow you to keep failing. God wants you to keep passing. It's his greatest desire. And he gave you a tutor, the Holy Spirit. There's no excuse. He lives in you. He will help you. Greater is he that lives in you than he or she or they or what is in the world. He's greater. But have you lost your faith? Do you not believe that anymore? Because God's saying, Mauricio, he's saying, elevate church. Ready? 2018's coming. Set means get in position. And grow means I'm going to elevate you. Ready, set, grow. But pastor, but you don't know, man. Man, I've just been tested in my health, tested in my in my finances, tested in my relationships. Well, let me tell you something. There's a reason for that. There's a reason because ask yourself, just maybe I keep dealing with that same area because God still can't trust me yet because I keep failing that test. Come on, this is the year to endure whatever it is that's been holding you back from becoming the man and woman God desires for you to be. And that is a spiritual giant in the kingdom. How weird is it to be saved two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you're still acting like a junior higher or an elementary? Like you can't even think of one verse that can get your body healed. Listen, I know there are people, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not being rude because I'm telling you this out of experience. For 22 years, I have dealt with health issues in our family. 22 years, and it has not stopped. But because I keep passing the test of sickness and disease, God keeps me going in my growing. You have to be sick of sickness, you have to be sick and tired of disease. You have to have a holy anger of all those things and say, enough is enough because this is delaying me for my greatest breakthrough. Guess what? The reason I have been challenged so much in sickness is because God reminded me in the last few days, he said, Mauricio, I gave you a healing anointing to pray for the sick and see them recover and I want you to come back to that. I'm telling on myself. I examined myself the last few days. He said, son, I anointed you, man. I gave you the ministry of healing. And you walked away from the test. So come back 2018. I'm back at that chair. And we're going to see 
great miracles, great signs, great wonders are going to take place in this house. Amen? It's going to happen. So I'm talking to the choir. Things are going to change in this house. And it's going to be good stuff. Oh, pastor's going weird. No, you're weird. <laughs> you can be weird while I walk healed. I got a new knee. I got a new knee. You, and you're going to, listen, and you're going to have a rebirthing inside of you of something new too. Man, you're going to have the greatest desire for his word. Look at this. Quickly, let's get out of here already. Two more, two more verses. He says, uh, Hebrews 4.15, close your stuff. Let me just read it to you. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been what? Tempted and also what? Tested in every way just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Isn't that good news? Look at this other one. So what do I got to do, Pastor? Well, I'll show you. 2 Timothy 2.15, he says this. He says, study. Everybody say study. study. He says, study. What's that word study mean? It means to be diligent. It means to strive. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You see, whatever it is that has shamed you to go back and retake, no more shame. Go back. Take the test. You will pass. He says, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, God is, God is saying, man, Mauricio, I want you to, you to be diligent in living faithfully before me. Faithfully before me. And not that, not just faithfully. Faithfully requires suffering. Nobody wants to suffer. But the reality is when you pick up your cross and you follow him, it includes suffering. So stop getting so mad about, I'm so suffering. Comes with it. You want to grow? Suffer a little bit. But that's wrong. Oh, see, because if not, the, Satan will twist you and say, you see, the reason you suffer is because you got no faith. No, the reason you suffer is because I got faith. If I had no faith, my suffering would be different. As a matter of fact, when I'm not suffering, I must not be doing something right. I must be living for me if I'm not suffering because living for him requires some suffering. Why? Because you know what? If you want to have a beautiful set of roses, man, you better be pruned. There's going to have to be some cutting. There's going to have to be some removing from your life. And that hurts sometimes because God sometimes will have someone in your life that doesn't belong there that must be cut from you. Why? Because it's distracting you from God's greater purpose. So don't get mad. And don't get even. Be happy. <laughs> Study. That means I have to sacrifice. I got to wake up earlier. I got to read my word. I got to pray. I got to chew on God's word. I got to meditate. I got to think about God's word. I have to examine myself. Tonight, today, I want you to go home after this. Go examine yourself. Check yourself. Like, okay, where did I, where did I fail that I'm going to retake in 2018? Because maybe this year, man, I've just been a poor uh, churchgoer. You know, I've been skipping school. You know, I just come to church when something's going wrong in my life, and then I show up. Or I just show up on holidays because I'm the holiday Christian. You know, no. I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to cheat. Man, I'm going to be faithful to the one that I proclaim I serve. And I'm going to show up, and I'm going to let God show me off, and I'm going to uh, take every class. I'm going to get a tutor if I have to. What's a tutor? Get around the right people that love God that are going to tutor you how to grow in God. Amen? Because I can't teach you everything on a Sunday service. At some point, you got to open your Bible and study. And you know what? You don't just read your Bible. You study and you read your Bible and you chew on it. Remember the cow message? Yeah? You got to chew on the word. Why? Because the test that God gives is an open book test. He gives you all the answers. Last verse, Romans 15, 4 says, everything written in the past was written to what? Why, why was it written? Why was it written? So if you're not growing, it's because you're not a student. You must read your Bible. 
I challenge the ADM, I challenge you, go buy a Bible. No, but I like my, I like my, my iPad, I like my iPhone, that's how I read my Bible. Oh, well, go get a Bible. Because there's something about turning the pages of God's word. And I truly believe that the prophetic word for some of you today is God wants to turn the page in your life. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.